Hey guys, so I'm going to take a look at what is going on with your third party situation. I'm going to start by saying what's going on with the masculine and the karmic, and then I'm going to look into how this affects your relationship with him and see if he's going to be making any move towards you in the near future. Again, remember for everyone it's going to be different though, but this is just the general energy for those that are drawn to these um, collective third party readings. So what is going on with third party situation? What is going on with the masculine and the karmic? What is going on in that situation? What do we need to know about that? Star, the Four of Swords, the Five of Swords, the High Priestess. Yeah, a lot of mixed energy, a lot of very confusing energy. I think that, I think I see more betrayal here. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys followed my last um, reading on this, but I was basically getting betrayal. I was getting, I think that would have been the last reading I did on the third party situation. I... I got that the karmic and the, you know this for some of you your um your karmic the karmic and your masculine are living together or your feminine however it plays out for you for some of you they're living together for some of you they're just you know they're together in some other way but I got very strongly that there was some sort of betrayal like he like he or she again this could be male or female so it's however it plays out for you whatever your story is don't get too caught up on gender it's just it's you know what your story is, so you, you'll take this how it resonates. Um, basically, someone cheated is what I got. Or somebody, there might have been an argument between the karmic and your masculine, and it was just such an explosive argument that they just, they really hit low. They, they said some pretty hurtful, harsh things, and there's just no going back from that point. So whatever the betrayal was, whether it was cheating or it was an argument or it was just some kind of lie that came out. I feel like a lot of lies um, were revealed during the pink moon. What was that, like a month or so ago? I feel like a lot of truth came up. And it was it was kind of like that tower moment. It was just, it was very explosive. And the masculine was hurt, but he realized that there was just no going back from that point. He realized that the trust between him and the karmic was... You know, again, whether it was things that were said or, or just truth that came out, just lies being revealed, whatever it was, he just realized that there was no going back after that point. So something pretty major happened to shake things up. Um, and that was probably the divine intervention also coming to, to make him finally realize that the karmic isn't really right for him, that, you know, this isn't where his true happiness lies. And he was a bit heartbroken. He might have been turning to substances or partying a lot or just trying to numb the pain. I think it was really a, a rough phase for him. But I think it was something that he knew was coming for a while. I think that, I think, I don't know. I, th I think that he kind of told himself that he was happy with the karmic and everything was good and fine. And, you know, he really loved her and, you know, that was his person. But it was, it was more just familiar and comfortable. It was safe because he could never fully, deeply love her the way that he loves you. You have to realize sometimes with, with men and women, too, that have commitment issues, sometimes you look at them and you're like, well, wow, why, why, the, why the hell were you afraid to commit to me? But then you went and met the karmic and committed to her and gave her everything I wanted. What's up with that? Well, the thing is, it's... It's the emotional commitment. It's the emotional depth. So on the surface level, he might be more committed to the karmic, but there's still a certain level of commitment that she just doesn't have from him because he doesn't deeply love her. You know what I mean? It's it's like the it's like the loveless marriage where you know, the couple sleeps in separate rooms or they just they talk and they go out to dinner and they they hang out with their friends here and there, but there's no, you know, deep all night long talks there's no cuddling in bed together and and looking in each other's eyes and breaking down crying or 
or, you know, staying up till 5 a.m. talking and sharing your deepest secrets. There's, there's none of that with the karmic. So even though he might have made her his official girlfriend or even married her or even moved in with her, um, there's still just a certain level of commitment that she doesn't have from him because it can't go as deep with her as it could go with you. I hope that makes sense. And I do sense that he's been wanting to push past his fear, though. I, I do think that he does because, you know, you don't want to spend your life in a loveless relationship. You don't want to spend your life not being with the right person. And, you know, what's going on with the karmic, it hurts him, but it doesn't hurt him that deeply because I think he always knew that she wasn't the one or she always knew he wasn't the one. It's what, whatever your story is. Or or it could be female-female or male-male. It's, it's whatever, however it resonates. I think, if anything, that, that betrayal was more of an inconvenience for him. It's like he wanted to lie to himself and pretend like he was happy and, you know, this is just a normal, healthy relationship. It's stable. It's fine. Whatever. It's it's boring, but it's, you know, it's, it's what he's chosen. It's um, He just, he wanted to live in denial. He wanted to just kind of push you to the back of his mind and and just have a very surface level, kind of shallow relationship with the karmic. Um so all this truth being revealed, it's almost like it just, it's like this tower moment that he went through probably about a month or two ago. And again, you know, each person is on a different level in their journey. So for some of you, they're going through it now. For others, it was like a month or two ago. But that energy is here. That's still, it's still consistent. That tower is here again. So so if your masculine has been ignoring the tower, it's going to come up again and again in uglier ways. You know what I mean? And I, I do think that for some masculines, it was like such an inconvenience that they just, they realized that they couldn't go back to being in denial and pretending like the relationship was great after what happened. And so it just, it is like this truth bomb where it's like they just have to finally stop lying to themselves and stop lying to you and stop pretending to be happy. They finally had, were forced to to you know to admit what they had known all along and men had been trying to bury which is that this person wasn't really right for them this person isn't their true love and i do sense them wanting to come to you it's really hard with these masculines though because I, there's always so much fear when it comes to these deep intense romantic relationships they always have so much fear when it comes to coming towards you so it's like sometimes i'll get it's like they're they're on their way sometimes i do feel that but then some of them kind of hold back because of their fear. So I'm going to try to cut through that more and, and help you guys. You know, for those that are subscribed to my channel, I, I want to always be honest with you. I always give you guys honest readings, even if it's not what you want to hear. I always want to be honest and forward with you about where your masculine is at. But I also want to help give you guys solutions to, to draw them towards you because I know how lonely and painful this process can be. But the divine is intervening. I do feel divine intervention. I think that your guides or theirs or both your guides are kind of tired of the masculine sabotaging this and not getting on his path and and, and pushing you away. Because um, it's like, look, you're so open. You're so open to him with this Knight of Cups. This has two different meanings. I'm going to read it again in a different way. But right now I'm also just being, you know, channeling and, and being led to, to read it this way. It's like, you're so open to him. You know what I mean? And it's like, he keeps hurting you. He keeps, he keeps letting you down. Um, but they're coming in, that your guides are coming in with tower moments for him. So he's not going to be able to just stick with the karmic. It's going to, if he tries to, it does look like he's been kind of going back and forth with the karmic. That's what I'm getting from this reading. So it looks like he is kind of trying to be in denial a little bit. Like he knows, he knows there's no going back. Like he knows he can't trust her again after whatever just happened. But there's this part of complacent part of him where he's like so afraid of being alone right now and he's so afraid of stepping into the unknown and he's so afraid of just how unfamiliar it would be with you and with everything going on in the world right now, how chaotic the world is, he's really afraid to be by himself. Um, but, but again, yeah, your guides are coming in with tower moments. So if he keeps holding on to her, it's going to get uglier. The fights are going to get more chaotic. Um, if she cheated, she's going to cheat again. And it's probably going to be worse this time. Like, he might walk in on them. Um, or there could be cheating going on with a friend, too. Some type of major betrayal. So whatever betrayal he just went through, if he holds on to her, the universe is going to tear them apart. The universe is going to make their relationship more chaotic and more unstable until he finally lets go. 
So this is very roller coaster energy that we have here. So I asked, the question I asked was what's going on with the masculine and the karmic, and then I'm going to pull some cards to see what's going on in your connection. But with the star, it's like he had hope again. It's like he wanted to just, he, he had put so much energy into this or effort and, and he had lied to himself for so long that it's like he didn't want to just let it go and just throw all that away and he didn't want to go back to being alone or, you know, with you, it's like it's unfamiliar and scary and it's deep and, and there's probably a lot of issues that you guys would have to work through and a lot of communication and trust that would have to be built and he wasn't really willing to do that work. So he just kind of, you know, buried his head in the sand and, and try to, you know, with the star, just try to have hope again for this karmic connection. And with the four and five of swords here, it's interesting. Because you see with the four of swords, it's somebody who is just exhausted from life. It's like this is your masculine who is just exhausted and just broken and tired. And they don't want to keep doing this. Um... They're very torn because it's like they don't want to be alone, but they're too, they're so afraid of the unfamiliar connection with you. They're so afraid of doing the work. They're so afraid of rejection. Um, and it's like, this is just them wanting to rest and heal and just wanting peace. It's like they, they might be going through a depress a, a phase of depression where it's like they don't really talk to a lot of people. They might be isolating from you and from everybody else in their life too, so... Um, they might be, it kind of might appear that they're ghosting people, like they're ghosting their friends or they're neglecting their friends, but I think they're just really depressed. And so they're having a hard time communicating right now. They're going inward a lot and they might be sleeping a lot more than usual. Might be turning to substances too as an outlet um, to get some relief, but it's like they're just exhausted. So they don't really, they're kind of just stuck in limbo. It's like they... They know that they're not happy with the karmic. They know the karmic's not right for them. They know that it's chaotic and there's a lot of betrayal there. And they've known it all along. It's just your guides have made it more and more obvious to them recently because they've been holding on to it when they need to let go of it. But it's like, yeah, they're just, they're tired. They want rest. They want peace. They want, they want healing. They don't want to, that's kind of why they're not coming forward to you now right now, I think, is because they're, they don't, but I feel like they don't have the energy. Like, they're afraid of, like, the deep, serious talks or, like, just feeling that deeply again because whatever the, but this betrayal is, it's still affecting them. It's not so much about the karmic because I don't feel like he really loved the karmic that deeply. I think it's more the betrayal. It's more, it's, it's just, it's like an inconvenience. You know what I mean? It's like betrayal hurts. Rejection hurts. Even if you're not deeply in love with that person, it still affects you mentally. Um... And for some, I think that cheating happened with a friend. I think for a couple of you, um, the karmic might have cheated on the masculine with one of his friends. And so I think that could be part of the betrayal because I feel like there, I feel that energy for a couple of you. So that might make sense. Um, with the five of swords here, look at her though. This is the karmic. Look how angry and defensive she is. It's like he just wants rest and healing and peace, and she just wants to fight. She just wants to cause drama. It's like he's just trying to retreat. I almost feel like he's trying to connect with you telepathically too, and I think on some telepathic level she's aware of that and she tries to stop him because I just kind of sense that he's, I don't know, he's just depressed. He just wants to, to kind of isolate and just kind of find himself and just heal himself again. And with the Five of Swords, it's like she's not allowing that. She's not allowing him time to think. She's not allowing him time to decide if he wants to stay with her in this abusive, horrible relationship or if he wants to be alone or if he wants to pursue you. Like, she's not letting him make his own choices. She's nagging him. She's defensive. She's fighting with him. If he tries to get space, she doesn't let him have his space. If he tries to isolate and just kind of, like, you know, needs to sleep or needs to rest she's you know saying he's he's horrible and he's neglecting her i think that he, she might be gaslighting him too i do sense some gaslighting here i think so looking at the high priestess and the devil here because i always channel when i read so these cards are always going to have different meanings okay so i feel like this means a couple different things for this reading let me see if i can put that up so you guys to there's a glare sorry <laughs> Okay, so this I'm going to read this a couple different ways. One, one thing that I'm getting from this is that she's trying to be you. With the high priestess here, 
It's like you're feminine and you're beautiful and you're soft and you're intuitive and you're strong. Um, and you're, you're just, you're, you have this high priestess energy about you, like this very grounding kind of goddess energy about you, this very healing, motherly, nurturing, loving, just very nature-based energy about you. And she's trying to see what the devil here. It's like, she's trying to, um, replicate that basically. She is trying to pretend like she could be that for him. And he starts trusting it a little bit because he's, you know, he's just so, I think he's so glad to like, he's so tired right now. He's so exhausted with the drama that when she, whether he's aware that she's trying to be you or not, I think he's just so glad when she tr even pretends to be in this high priestess energy because it's like a break from her constantly being in the nagging five of swords energy. It's like she's in that energy and then he pulls away further and then she gets in this high priestess energy instead to try to pull him back in and she tries to be sweet and feminine and soft and loving and it's it's all an act just to get him back in but it's 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 a nice break from the drama you know what I mean like he doesn't really care if she's pretending or not just as long as she stops nagging at him for a little bit but then you know her true nature comes out here with the devil she can't really keep up the high priestess act for very long sooner or later her toxicity um, and her anger and her all her her bullshit comes up, and it it can't she can't really pretend to be the high priestess for too long. The second meaning I feel with this with this reading is that he's what I was saying earlier. I think you guys are kind of telepathically communicating, maybe through dreams. I feel that energy a lot the past month or so. And I feel like she comes in with the devil and blocks it. This could also be not just her coming up, but it could be him turning to substances like alcohol, drugs, partying, whatever else. And that could be um, maybe just like that self-destructive path and like that depression is kind of blocking him from really fully getting in tune with his intuition. It's interesting though, because with chaotic processes like this, um, when they're doing their shadow work, sometimes that, that can help them use their intuition, you know, because sometimes it's like this tower moment, it's like this messy, destructive process. Um, how do I explain that? It's almost like a purging process. So if they're doing their shadow work, even if things are messy and chaotic, it could clear them out and lead them to be more intuitive because they're being true to what they feel and they're opening themselves and they're being vulnerable again and they're doing the shadow work. But there's also times through that process when they're really at a low and they're not just purging, when they're just like closed off and detached and those are the times it's going to be hard for them to use their intuition. So shadow work is good. I just wanted to clarify that, that shadow work isn't a bad thing. It is good. You know, sometimes they do need to go through the dark night of the soul and they do need to go through these tower moments to purge and to, to find themselves and to just be their true selves. You know, you, you can't have you can't have light without darkness. You have to merge both the light and the darkness and, and find a good balance and just let things flow. Um, but yeah, there's just some set, some sort of a block here. It's like this intuitive block where this, where, whether it's the karmic or whether it's also, you know, um, just toxic addictions and patterns and stuff that are just kind of blocking their intuition. But it's good. I mean, as chaotic as it is right now, I feel like this is a pretty good reading overall because of this tower moment. Like your guides are finally intervening. They're finally saying enough is enough. Um, you both deserve more than this. You can't be waiting around for each other forever. Um, and, and so they're, they're finally coming in and it's, it might be still a chaotic back and forth process between the masculine and the karmic or the feminine and the, and the karmic, however that plays out. But, um, it's, it's still something that your guides are, are basically forcing to come to an end. You know, like I said, there's going to be, if he holds on to her and he keeps trying with her and he just stays in this codependent back and forth relationship, she's going to get more abusive. She's going to get more toxic. She's going to cheat again. She's going to do, you know, he or she is going to do this or this and this, and it's going to get worse and it's going to get make more chaotic until there's no choice but to just, until they're so miserable, they have no choice but to leave that situation. 
Like this karmic situation, your guides are pushing, whether you're in the karmic situation or it's your, you know, for most of you, for some of you, it might be you in the karmic situation. For others, it's probably your masculine in the karmic situation. Um, but your, your guides are gonna, are gonna push that out. They're not gonna let this happen anymore. And with the Knight of Cups, it's kind of like, like, see, he's opening his heart again to her to some degree, you know, again, not fully. He never fully opened his heart to her, but it's like, he's opening his heart. He's trying again. He's, you know, wishful thinking and the tower comes in, which is more cheating, more betrayal, more lies, more chaos. Um, and it's going to be like that for as long as he wants it to. And it's going to, like I said, it's going to get louder and louder. Um, it's going to get louder and louder until he lets it go. So let me see what else I can get on this. I want to pull some cards for you guys and see where your connection is at. Okay, so what is, let me see, make sure these cards are all upright. What is the masculine most likely going to do? What efforts and actions are you, are, are you going to, is he going to take towards the feminine? Let's say over the next like week or two, just what's the current energy? What, what's what action is he currently wanting to take towards you? What action is he most likely to take towards you, I should say? What's going on with you and the, the masculine? Okay, some of these came up, up, out upside down, so I don't, I'm just going to turn them all upside, right side up because I didn't mean to read them that way. So this looks pretty good. We have hope, movement, rigid, high priestess of fire, vision, individu individuality, and success. So this could be a fire sign. Um, it could also just be fiery energy, just passion and, um, and romance, basically. Let me see the light. Does that help? No, not really. Sorry. Probably should do these readings at night so you guys can see better. Actually, let me, sorry, let me close the window really quick. Hold a little bit, I guess. All right. So he has hope and he wants to move forward is what I'm getting, but he's afraid it's going to be rigid. He's afraid... So I think that's what I was getting earlier is just it's still that chaos with the karmic and he's just he's afraid that that there'll be fights with you or that you won't trust him or you won't forgive him. Um, he's just afraid he's afraid of fully opening his heart to you and having this hope and moving forward and coming towards you and making this love offer or like if he has a hard time apologizing he's probably struck like wanting to apologize but struggling to apologize. And he's wanting to move forward, but he's just, again, he's just afraid that it's going to be rigid. He's gonna, afraid that there's going to be a block there. He's afraid that he's going to apologize and get rejected or that he's going to, you know, say too much or say too little or say the wrong thing. Or that he's not healed enough or he just, he has all these doubts and insecurities right now. And if you look at the High Priestess of Fire, it's like she looks angry. It's like there's this passion, but there's this stubbornness too. So I think he's just so exhausted. He's afraid of just more drama, more miscommunication, um, not being on the same page, not understanding each other. And Mercury Retrograde, you know, there are probably a lot of exes coming back around. But... Um, But, I mean, it can be chaotic and there can be miscommunication. So watch out for that if this person does come back around and talk to you, which, you know, again, they might definitely with work you being in retrograde right now. But they're, yeah, they're just, they're afraid that you're in this energy, that you're just, you're angry, you're, you're, you're kind of guarded. I think with the vision card here, they're trying to use their intuition, though, and get past that energy and move forward um, with individuality and success. I feel like they're, they're, 
appreciating you more and also seeing that you're an individual like there's they're seeing how unique you are and they're kind of maybe that's why they're thinking so hard about communication because maybe you guys miscommunicate or maybe you're just very different and like there's a certain way that you communicate like there's certain things that make you angry or there's certain things that they did in the past that made you upset and so they're really like realizing how much of an individual you are um in the sense of just in, in the sense of communication styles in the sense that there's just, you know, taking your past into account. They're, they're just kind of realizing that you're unique. And so they're really trying to make sure that they communicate with you in the right way. They're trying to find the proper balance before they come in. And I also take this to mean that they're kind of trying to find themselves right now too and be, um, you know, right for you, be, be their, their true selves. And uh, go not, not just go along with society standards or... I feel like arranged marriage for some of you like there might have been I, there's probably just one of you that that maybe your, your masculine is with the karmic and it's an arranged marriage or it's arranged like family or for, or some type of situation that's similar like family and friends kind of pushed it they wanted it but he wasn't crazy about it um and so he's he's learning to be an individual and stand apart from them and really be true to what he wants and once he does that he's successful but it's still kind of a chaotic messy process in the meantime let me just pull a few more cards really quick and see um, if I can get anything on what's going on astrally. I just made um, this deck that I'm going to be using for you guys to determine what's going on in the astral realm. Or like telepathically, you know, astrally, psychically, telepathically, whatever, however you want to word that. Okay. So what's the final thing we need to know about this, con this connection, about what's going on with the third parties right now? Third party reading. What's going on? What's going on? Twin flame. So yeah, this could be a twin flame connection um, or at least a soulmate. This is exchanging energy through the chakras. So there are there is a lot going on telepathically. It's kind of like what I was saying in, in the first spread that I did. Where I was saying that I feel like you and your masculine communicate telepathically or you show up in each other's dreams and the karmic might not be conscious of that but on like an astral telepathic level she is aware and she does try to block it I feel um but you guys do mirror each other and you know this you are you are um helping each other heal astrally spiritual aid so let's see let me put all these out actually Nightmares, communications, soulmate. Yeah, for some of you, it's a soulmate, too. So, the nightmare card says, Sleepless nights filled with deep regrets, chaotic mental state, and fear and anxiety. Um... And I think that is kind of your masculine's mental state sometimes when it comes to you is like he he does have this deep regret and he does have this deep longing for you. He does miss you, but he doesn't really show it on a conscious level a lot. But it's like he's, you know, communication. I'm try desperately trying to get through to you. Can you feel me when I think of you? So for some of you, possibly if this is like an ex, if your masculine is like an ex or somebody that you that you've had this this history with then I kind of feel like maybe there was arguments or miscommunication between you guys before and they're just kind of afraid of that heartbreak again. Like they're afraid of, again, just overthinking things and just afraid that they'll say or do the wrong thing or afraid that you guys will get back to old patterns or you'll miscommunicate again or there will be distance or just arguments or just what, whatever type of miscommunication between you again. But it's like they're desperately trying to get through to you. So it's like they're they're... They want to know how to get through that bubble. They basically, they want to know how to communicate with you better. For a lot of you, I don't think they're telling you any of this. I think this is just kind of their thoughts. Like when they're alone at night, it's like they just have this regret and they have this longing for you and they miss you. And it's like they're, I almost feel like they've said so many things to you inside their heads, if that makes any sense. That almost, like, to the point where they think that you just know it already. Like, they probably, like, might think about, you know, th like, have pretend conversations with you in their head, basically. Or, like, tell you they love you in their head. Or, like, they express their wants and their needs and their desires in their head. And then they, they only, and this could be in the past, too, where it's like they would, 
there might be an issue and they would they would think about it a lot in their head but they would only communicate a small percentage of that so you had no way of just psychically knowing exactly what they were feeling and thinking but they expected you to and so it's like they just they communicate with you but it's like they communicate with you in these like fake conversations like that they they make up in their heads or like telepathically but a lot of that communication isn't actually in the physical world um and so they need to be aware of that too. That is one thing, like if you guys get back together that I think you guys need to talk about is that they need they need to be more upfront about how they feel because they can't just they can't keep that all inside and expect you to just figure it out on your own. Um, you know, this could be a soulmate for some of you. Let's see, I'm trying to get spiritual aid. Hold on. So I think spiritual aid in this case is actually is it could be stones and crystals and like sigil magic. So if you're doing that, it's it's you know talking about it being successful, uh, I think it's also saying, you know, your guides are helping protect this twin flame or soulmate connection. Like they're, they're, they're helping push this through. Um, there is another woman involved though, and there is a psychic battle coming up. It says, you know, warrior spirit, the fight isn't over, but there is victory after struggle. So it's almost like the Knight of swords where it's like, it's the final battle. Basically it's like, there's just, you guys are close, <laughs> not quite there. Um, they are wanting to come forward, but they're just, they're still, I hate to say it, but yeah, they're just still in their head so much and, um, they need to get out of their head. But, but again, they're, they're, your guides are trying to push them through that. They're kind of going through a dark night of the soul, I think. So they're being pushed out of that energy. So anyway, if this resonates, please go ahead and subscribe below and thank you guys for watching.